Street Knowledge with Chris Graham. Let's talk some baseball. Chris Graham here on the podcast. And we're going to talk Nats Dodgers NLDS Game 5. And uh, for those listening, yeah, you might you might remember hearing me say on one of the podcasts in the last few days about how, uh, well, I was scheduled to go to the ACC Operation Basketball. been thinking about that for months. Couldn't wait to get back and get into the swing of things ACC-wise. But something intervened. Playoff baseball. Uh, you know, I spend so much time following the Nats just as a fan. We write about the Nats sort of bloggy, but it's okay. I'm a sports writer, so I can break things down and, and that kind of thing. So anyway, the chance you know, with, with the Nats playing games three and four in D.C. on Sunday and Monday, uh, I'm very lucky that my wife, Crystal, is a huge baseball fan. She watches the Nats with me every night of the spring and summer and into the fall. And I'm very fortunate in that respect. And she loves going to the games. And so we go a few times a year up to D.C. We'll try to catch, a, you know, a Friday and Saturday or Saturday, Sunday, and maybe stay a night in between. And we both love D.C., so, you know, we, we can go see some things around. This time we got to go for the first time to the National Museum of African American History, which was just an awesome experience. I had been wanting to go to that museum for a while. Finally off season. Of this, this is the fall now. I got a chance to go, and, and you could you could go – for hours. You could go for several times and not see everything in that museum. That and the Holocaust Museum, two places you have to go in D.C. Just throwing that out there. It's a Nats podcast. Make a weekend of it next year. Hey, maybe next week if things happen the right way tonight, right? But uh, anyway, so we love D.C. We love going up. And uh, my, you know, my wife says, while we're watching game two from L.A. on TV on Friday night, hey, you know they're playing on Sunday and Monday. Why don't we go? And uh, we had to arrange for a dog sitter. We did that, and we got to go for games three and four. And, and the Nats lose game three, ten to four, and it felt pretty bad. You know, it was an ugly loss. Patrick Corbin, the six earned runs in two-thirds of an inning in relief after the great start by Sanchez. But then, you know, I was thinking all along, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm silly like this, but uh, I grew up a Braves fan and uh, became a Nats fan when uh, the Nats drafted Ryan Zimmerman back in 05 and – and, um, uh, you know, rooted for the UVA guy. And now there's a lot of UVA guys in the big leagues, but, uh, you know, rooted for the UVA guy in the big leagues and and um, kind of grew up with this team as bad as they were for a long time. Now they've been good for the last several years. Haven't gotten past the NLDS round, though. Uh, but, I, you know, back to, to being a you know Braves fan growing up, there was a series of 95 National League Championship Series. I think I might have talked about this with Jerry Carter yesterday, but I'll, I'll kind of rehash for those who maybe didn't hear that part. Uh, the the Braves were losing that series two to one. Uh, you have Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz in some order to go thereafter, but Bobby Cox made the decision. Hey, I'm going to actually start Denny Nagel here in Game Four. If we win, great. Then I've got those three guys who are going to be Hall of Famers. Then they are, uh, and and I only have to win two or three with those guys. And if we lose, yeah, we got to run the table with them. But I've still got the three best pitchers in this series, and and you know I like the chance that we have to do that. Nagel lost, but then, you know, the three Hall of Famers won. So, uh, and, and the Braves ended up winning the series that year. Uh, with with what Davey Martinez faced uh, with, with this series, he could have gone with Scherzer on short rest for game three, or excuse me, game four. Well, I guess it would have been game three. Yeah, game three in D.C. And then gone with Strasburg game four. Uh, but if you lose either of those games on short, with you guys on short rest, then what do you do game five would be a question, right? Uh, you could have gone back to Corbin, certainly, uh, but uh, the decision was made. We'll go to Sanchez. We'll use Scherzer on regular rest. We'll use Strasburg on regular rest. Maybe we steal game three, and, and they certainly could have. Uh, Sanchez left with a 2-1 lead in the fifth. Uh, didn't didn't work out, but you still had Scherzer for game four. He pitched great, one run in seven innings, and now you've got Strasburg in game five. Now the Dodgers also have a pretty good one in game five, Walker Buehler. Uh, and so this matchup is one of the better pitching matchups you'll see in a deciding game in a playoff, certainly this year. I mean, I don't know, you know, unless we get to a final round and say it's Verlander and, and Kershaw or Verlander and Bueller or Verlander and Scherzer or something like that, you know, or, uh, but, you know, there's, there's few of these elite pitching matchups that are, that are possible. And, and we have it, we have it coming tonight uh, between these two. Uh, and, so things worked out for the Nats to get to this game, and now it's a one game. It's a one game scenario, and yeah, the Dodgers are the home team, and and Buell, we have guys who've won uh, in this series. Uh, Strasburg won Game Two, Bueller won Game One. Strasburg gave up one run on three hits in six innings in Game Two. Bueller no runs on one hit in Game One. 
uh, in the 6 nothing win for the Dodgers in the series opener. But, uh, you know, I think I've said this on podcast recently, and it's not an original idea. I heard this on another podcast, but it's, it's ever since I heard this, the way this was put, uh, it's, it's been something I've not been able to escape. Uh, I was worried for weeks after I heard this podcast, uh, the, the, the podcaster mentioned that, you know, for, in, in, in relation to the wild card game, you know, we knew that the Nats were not going to win the NL East. Uh, the Braves also face a game five today, actually, is with the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, and so, but we knew they were far enough ahead. The, you know, the Nats weren't going to catch the Braves, and so the Nats were going to face a one-game scenario, uh, whether it would be the Brewers, whether it would be the Cubs, perhaps the Mets were chasing for a while there, and you didn't know if the Nats were going to host or were going to be on the road. Not that that really mattered because it's one game. But the the point that was made was, boy, in a one-game scenario, even the Orioles and Tigers or the Royals could win a one game against anybody. You know, the Orioles could beat the Dodgers in one game. You're not talking about. You know, baseball's a funny sport like that. You're not going to put the New England Patriots against the Washington Redskins, as we saw last week, uh, or against the Miami Dolphins, as we, saw, as we saw earlier this year, and expect to see you know the Dolphins or Redskins beat the Patriots. You know, the best team in football and the worst team in football, there's a huge gap there. Alabama playing against Vanderbilt. No offense to Vanderbilt, but Alabama's going to kill Vanderbilt 10 times out of 10. But in baseball, one-game scenario, in one game, any one team can beat another team. And so, yes, Dodgers have home field. Yes, they've got a hot pitcher in Bueller. But it doesn't take much. And baseball such a, you know, you're talking about there's a guy standing 60 feet, 6 inches away on a hill, throwing a ball 90 plus miles per hour, with, and it breaks in, it breaks out, it goes up, it goes down. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe the next one's 82 miles an hour with a big sharp bend to it. Uh, you know, a, the, the ball might hit a glove and bounce off. It might hit a base. It might hit a wall. It might hit a fan's hands. Uh, there's just so – you might miss a base. You might slide into a base and hurt something. I mean, any, so many things can happen in a baseball game in three or four hours. Tonight, 8.37 Eastern time start for these two teams. Uh, so at least – well, I, I was getting ready to say at least these two teams are at full strength. They're really not. The Dodgers do go in stronger, if you want to say. Um because uh, they do have Bueller starting, and they do have Clayton Kershaw available. Now, Dave Roberts, the Dodgers manager, said uh, going into game that that going into game four, Kershaw would have been available to pitch in in that game if there had been a scenario that would have presented itself. None presented themselves. The Nats took an early lead. Well, actually, the Dodgers took the early lead. Nats tied it in the third. Uh, Roberts, I thought, went a little too soon to his bullpen. He had Rich Hill starting, went uh, after two and two-thirds, went to the bullpen and kind of put himself behind the eight ball there a bit. Nats took the lead in the fifth, and then it was eventually the three-run homer by Ryan Zimmerman. Zimmerman, go who's. Uh, he, uh, he, that put the, the Nats up significantly. I think it was 5-1 at that point, an RBI sack fly. Uh, Rendon six, and he made it 6-1. But Roberts said if the game had been a, a tie game or a, a you know like a one-run lead for the Dodgers in a sixth, seventh, eighth inning, maybe ninth inning, that Kershaw would have been available. So he's he's he didn't get used in that game. He'll be available in this game. I think he would you know, if he if he'd been used for an inning, uh, and, and the Dodgers had still lost, I think he still would have been available with a day off in between. Uh, to, to, to pitch perhaps in Game Five, so you go in with this into this one. If you're the Dodgers, you've got you've got Bueller, you've got Kershaw. Kershaw now can give you two innings. He might be able to give you three innings. Uh, Kenley Jansen didn't pitch uh, on Thursday. Uh, excuse me, on, on Thursday, on Monday. He did pitch on Sunday. Pretty sure he pitched on Sunday for an inning. It kind of surprised me that they did bring him out, but. Uh, Maybe just to get some work to keep him fresh. Uh, but Jansen can give and, – and Nats fans, longer time Nats fans will remember 2016. These two teams played a, a best of five a, in, a, in a deciding game five. That one was in D.C. back in 2016. Uh, and Jansen, I th- want to say, pitched three innings in that one. Uh, he came in in the – he came in in a seventh, maybe it was a sixth, but it was at least two innings in that one. He was the closer then. He's the closer now with with some sort of asterisks. His his numbers are not as good certainly as they were back in 2016. In 2016, he was lights out. Um, but uh, in that one, he came in early and then Kershaw finished in a, in a very unique uh, usage by Roberts in, in that situation. Um, I would think it would be reversed this time. I would think if Bueller gives you six, and you need to pinch it. Uh, and his pitch count is between 90 and 100. It would not surprise me to see Kershaw up and, and maybe giving you the seventh and eighth, uh, and then use Jansen for the ninth if you're Roberts. That would be a, a, a pretty. That wouldn't. Be, there'd be worse scenarios if you're Dave Roberts. 
The Nats don't have that strength. They don't have, uh, you know, they, they're not going to have Scherzer for this. You know, they, they've used the combination of Strasburg, Scherzer, or Scherzer, Strasburg uh, a couple times. Uh, Scherzer, Strasburg, uh, the combo won the wild card game. Uh, in fact, Strasburg got the win in relief with three innings of scoreless relief, 34 pitches, uh, in the wild card game uh, last Tuesday. Uh, and and uh, that was over a week ago now. And then in game two of the NLDS, uh, uh, it was Strasburg giving you six innings, and I think it was yeah, it was six. Gave you gave up gave you six with one run on three hits. And then Scherzer pitched an immaculate eighth, not quite a not not immaculate in the sense it was nine strikes on, on three strikeouts on nine strikes, but he 14 pitches, three strikeouts uh, to to bridge to the uh, to closer uh, in that 4-2 win, uh, and. Uh, and so you've used that combination twice already. The Nats have won three games in the playoffs. Two times they had both Scherzer and Strasburg pitching. Uh, but that's not going to happen tonight because Stras uh, Scherzer made it clear. He threw 109 pitches uh, on, on Monday. And uh, he, he made it clear that uh, he's, he's not available. Uh, uh, he, you know, he might pinch run. He might bunt if you need somebody to come in and bunt for you in a – in a situation late innings, if you have a relief pitcher and you don't want to use a pinch hitter, it wouldn't surprise me to see Scherzer pinch hitting uh, or perhaps pinch running. He's so competitive, and he's actually a pretty good base runner and, a good, and, and good with the stick, both with, both from the sacrifice standpoint and also he can he can put the ball in play uh, pretty consistently. Uh, I would trust him uh, in, in you know, maybe saving a bat for a different situation, but he's not going to pitch. So you got Strasburg, and then you got the bullpen. Uh, but you could have Corbin. You know, and you know, and I'm sure Corbin would be itching uh, at the opportunity to get out there and redeem himself. He's got both losses in this series. You know, he lost this, the the start game one. Uh, he pitched well, two earned runs in in uh, six innings, but uh, you know, just no offensive support in the loss to Bueller. And then, of course, the six runs in two thirds of an inning in game three. Uh, I'm sure he again, he's 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 chomping at the bit to get a chance to get out there. And if he can give you an inning, great. And he almost got out of that inning. You know, I hate to say almost, but he had two strikes. Uh, two outs, runner on first base, and, and then just couldn't get the, the third out uh, in that game in game three. So, uh, but you, you could have that. But I mean, ideally, if you're the Nats, I say ideally. Uh, you know, I, I, to me, the prescription for Dave Roberts is you, if if Bueller gives you six, you're probably happy. If he gives you seven, you're ecstatic. Uh, if 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 you're Dave Martinez, you're probably thinking Strasburg needs to give me seven, and it wouldn't hurt if he gave me eight. If he can hand the ball straight to Daniel Hudson in the ninth inning after giving you eight, you're going to win this game. If, if that's the case, if, if Strasburg goes eight, you win this game. If he goes seven, you're, you're probably going to win this game. But, you know, you still got to get through Doolittle likely in the eighth and then Hudson in the ninth or some combination thereof. It would depend on the lineup situation. It would depend on where the Dodgers would be in the lineup if that was the case. It, it could be that, you know, the other night when, they, when, they, uh, when Martinez brought – uh, do little in in the eighth. It was because he was going through the lefty part of the lineup. Uh, that felt like the save. It was a 6-1 game, so that wasn't a safe situation. But it felt like you get through this. If the Nats get through this eighth inning, you get through this part of the order. Muncie and and uh, Bellinger, uh, two lefties. You get through this part, you're, you're good in the ninth. Uh, it, so it, it would depend. I think it would again. It, it, the the usage of Hudson and Doolittle, Doolittle and Hudson, I think, can be dependent upon where you are in the lineup, uh, what bats are ready to go, that kind of thing. Uh, and if you can, you know, force matchups uh, in that kind of situation, that's just to your advantage. Uh, so, I, 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 but uh, the, a key part of this is keeping pitch counts low. Strasburg early innings, you know, no 25 pitch first innings. The 25 pitch first inning is not the, the formula here. No offense to any of those guys out there, but we don't want to see Fernando Rodney tonight. We don't want to see. Oh uh, God, I don't even want to think about any of those other guys. You, you don't want to see Hunter Strickland, you know. Uh, unless it's a 10 nothing game somehow uh, in favor of the Nats, um, you, you know you want what you want to see is is uh, you want to see Strasburg uh, serving as his own bridge. If if you have to if if he gives you six and Corbin can give you a seventh, great. Uh, but uh, boy, you know you really want seven out of Strasburg and you need seven out of Strasburg tonight. That's that's the situation. So it should be interesting. 8:37 start and uh, you know these Nats. This is their fifth appearance in the NLDS since 2012. That's five times in eight years. Have not gotten past this round. Hey, this will be the third game five uh, of of the uh, of the five years. And uh, uh, third or 
or fourth? Um, I think it might be the fourth. Scott, there was one year that the Giants, the loss to the Giants, that was a four-game series. I want to say that the 2012 was a four-game, excuse me, a five-game. Uh, 2016 was definitely a five. That those were at home, and then 2017 was at Chicago. So this will be the fourth in five years with a game five, uh, fourth of, of the five in the last eight years with the game five. So, um, so yeah, this is uh, another opportunity. Uh, one difference would be that I guess this is more like the 2017 year. Uh, that was a division champion team, and 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 the Cubs uh, had were coming off the World Series championship. Uh, so I don't know that there was a favorite in that game. I mean, the Cubs were the home team in that game, but I, it felt like those two teams were pretty even. Uh, 2016, the Nats were were the favorite, uh, and 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 lost that game. And, and 2012 certainly were the favorite. So. Um, this time, this time for the first time, I would I would characterize of the game fives that the, the Nats are, are are the clear underdogs, uh, even though these two teams have identical records dating back to May 24th. Before May 24th, the Dodgers uh, were 32 and 18, the Nats were 19 and 31. They've been even since then. Um, the the Dodgers have the advantage pitching matchup wise. They have the better bullpen. Uh, two even lineups. Starting pitchers are probably tilted towards the the Nats. If 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 this was if this was a game where uh, if, if Strasburg gives you nine, you definitely win. Um, but you know, in this situation, it's October. It's hard to hard to figure that uh, uh, it's going to come down just to starting pitch. It's going to come down to some relief pitching, a little bit of depth on the bench, uh, and a break or two. Honestly, a break or two for whoever uh, can get the early break could be the, the who, who decide how this game gets decided. Uh, Storylines in this one, you have to wonder if uh, my, my boy Zimmerman, uh, the aforementioned Ryan Zimmerman, a lot of talk about how, at least outside the clubhouse, about how this could be his last year. Uh, Zimmerman's made it pretty clear. He wants, he, he, he's very proud of the fact that he's been a lifelong Nat. Um, his contract's up, uh, and it's hard to imagine that he would be re-signed for anywhere close to what his current contract value is. Um, and so, you know, we have to wonder if this might be his last appearance in a Nats uniform. Now, he insisted, and his teammates insisted in the postgame after Monday's game, that that's talk outside the clubhouse. Inside the clubhouse, uh, Ryan wants to play. He thinks that the team wants him around. No talk from front office folks about that. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if, if Zimmerman wouldn't want to come back on a reduced contract. He's made a lot of money in his major league career, and if he wants, if he thinks he's got a couple more years to give, uh, and he's willing to give it at a at a reduced rate compared to his his you know most recent contracts, I don't think the Nats would not want to have him around. He's a veteran presence. He's the original Nat in a lot of people's mind, my mind certainly. Uh, he's been around so long. He's been around for this whole run, from uh, being the fourth pick in the first round of the draft. Uh, getting called up in September of that year for that cup of coffee, and he never left. Uh, and he's got a thousand career RBIs. I mean, he's been through the thick and the thin. Uh, he out he outlasted uh, certainly Bryce Harper uh, and his his uh, imprint on the franchise. So, uh, but it, you know, you have to wonder about that. You do have to wonder if if this could be the end there. Uh, also, I mean, there's talk about Strasburg himself. Uh, he could opt out. Uh, the contract that he signed a couple years ago does include an opt out for this year. Uh, and Strasburg certainly has has value now, even more than he had a couple of years ago. He's making $27.5 million. Uh, I would question, uh, I've talked about this with some folks, uh, at the, the way the free agencies worked the last couple of years. Uh, if, if you opt out at his age, I think he's 31 years old, you opt out now, uh, you know, the, the Harper Machado experience of the past year, uh, free agency-wise, might tell you that uh, – uh, you might be rolling the dice there a little bit. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if the Nats just offer him, uh, you know, a, a bit of an, a, you know, some, something to, to, to change thing, change his mind. Also, the Rendon situation. Anthony Rendon uh, is a free agent after this year, and the Nats have reportedly offered him seven years, 210 to 215 million dollars. But that question, so uh, all that hinges on tonight. We're still playing baseball. We don't have to worry about contracts and all that kind of stuff. But you do have to think, you know, if if this is the 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 end of the season, there could be a lot of change coming after this game. So let's put that off. Let's put that off for like three weeks. What do you say? Let's play some more baseball. Let's, let's we'll have an NLCS game in Nats Park. If that's the case, you know my sorry butt's going to be there. Let's get some World Series baseball back in D.C. It's been what, since the 20s? Since the, the, there's been a World Series game in the nation's capital? Let's make that happen. Got to start tonight. Got to win tonight if you're the Nats and a Nats fan. So, again, that's 8.37 p.m. Check out Augusta Free Press after the game. I'll give you my... Thoughts. Uh, we'll do a column uh, breaking things down, hopefully previewing the NLCS. <laughs> Let's hold out that hope there. But 
Uh, what a fun ride this has been. I'll close the podcast out here by saying this has been, you know, I've been following the Nats again since Zimmerman's rookie year. Uh, we watched a lot of bad baseball to get to this stage. We've watched a lot of good baseball to get to this stage. Uh, again, this is the fifth appearance in the NLDS in the last eight years. We've seen teams that we thought were going to go all the way that, you know, bad things have happened. Uh, but, you know, of the, the, the other four were division champs, and this was the wild card. But i got to say, this has been the most fun team. Uh, that I've I've been a Nats fan of of all the teams. Uh, they 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 seem to genuinely like each other. They have fun. They dance after home runs in the dugout. Uh, you know the whole baby shark thing. Uh, it just seems like a very loose group. Um, as a result, it's fun when you go to the games. It's fun you when you watch them on TV. Uh, it's fun to be a Nats fan. And uh, I just wanted to continue. Uh, this is a, this is the time of year when baseball gets really fun, and I just want to you know just. I'm not greedy. I just want another another couple games. I'd love to go back up to Nats Park one more time. I'll get some pork touches. Uh, see you, Tater. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, it's it's been a lot of fun. Hope it doesn't end tonight. But if it does, thank you, Nats, for a great summer. And we'll uh, we'll do a podcast tomorrow, wrapping up either, either wrapping up or wrapping and then previewing the NLCS. Either way. Uh, but this has been a lot of fun. And I uh, hope it doesn't end. Thank you for listening to the podcast. And we have a lot more coming today uh, with some UBA sports as well. Uh, in the news. So, uh, but I want to thank you for, for, for our listening to our Nats talk and we will talk again soon.